Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the horror mystery films from 2015, titled Backtrack. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie kicks off with our main character, Peter. He's a psychologist in his mid-30s, who suffers from nightmares and sorrow ever since the death of his daughter, which he blames on himself. He hears his wife, Carol, sobbing, and it turns out that she's had a rough dream. Moments later, Peter catches the bus and makes it to work, where he can distract himself from his daughter's death by listening to other people's problems. His first patient of the day is Felix, an elderly man in his 70s, who still feels like he's living in the past. Peter asks Felix who the President of the United States is. At first, Felix thinks that the question is absurd, and he says that the name of the President is Ronald Reagan. To confirm his suspicion, Peter asks Felix what year it is, and the old man replies that it's 1987. And with that, Peter writes down his diagnosis, it looks like Felix has amnesia. Felix asks if they have met before, to which Peter says yes, they met last week. In the next scene, we see Peter talking to a man named Duncan in a different office. It turns out that Duncan is the one who introduces Peter to new clients who come from various backgrounds, including Felix, and others to come. We learn that Peter and Carol lost their daughter, Evie, about a year ago and are still struggling to move on. Peter then has a flashback of the moments he shared with Evie, but the flashback ends with him running to find Evie's lifeless body in front of a truck. Moments later, Duncan asks Peter what diverted his attention from Evie the day she died, but the only thing he remembers is that he looked inside a shop one second and the next, Evie was on the ground. Peter spends the next couple of days attending to different patients absentmindedly until one of his patient's voices jerks him back to earth. We later find out that her name is Erica. She asks Peter if she is boring him, and Pete replies that he's listening. She also goes on to explain how sometimes she feels invincible. Later, Peter is startled by the sound of a train on the rails outside his window. When he's about to go home, he sees a young girl holding a doll, so he asks her who she's here to see and she points at him. Peter also asks the girl about her parents, but she doesn't answer. The girl then hands him a small purse that has her name on it, her name is Elizabeth Valentine. Peter asks her if she can write, and suddenly, the pencil starts to shake on the table, and another train passes by. Strangely, the sound of the train scares Elizabeth so much that Peter closes the windows, but before he turns around, Elizabeth runs out of the door. He looks out the window, and sees Elizabeth run across the street. Then he realizes that Elizabeth has written something in the book, it's the number 12787. When Peter gets home later that night, he goes to the room where they keep Evie's things. He picks up her picture of the box of things, and stares at it. After work the next day, Peter makes his way out of his office, but to his surprise, he sees the same doll that Elizabeth was holding the other day. He opens his office, only to see her looking out the window. Peter then asks her what she sees, and it seems like she begins to choke. Seeing her drop to the ground, Peter goes to his table to pick up some medication, but when he turns back around, Elizabeth is no longer there. The following day, Peter takes Elizabeth's doll and meets Duncan, but Duncan believes that Peter is imagining the whole thing. Duncan asks him how old Evie would be if she were alive, and then he asks Peter about Elizabeth Valentine's name. It turns out that Duncan's theory about Peter imagining things makes sense, because the initials of the girl read E.V., his daughter's name. When Peter gets back to his office, he picks up Elizabeth's case paper, and also looks at the paper that she wrote on. Peter opens the drawer of his desk, only to find the train pass that Elizabeth had given to him. When he gets home later that night, he falls asleep on the train, but as he opens his eyes, he is shocked to see one of his patients from earlier, Erica. The lights go off, and then this happens. Peter gets off the train, and sees Erica's scary-looking figure floating in the air. He starts doing research on Elizabeth Valentine, and finds out that a death certificate has already been made for her. As if that wasn't enough, he finds that most of the patients he has attended to in the past couple of days are all dead, including Felix and Erica. And it turns out they all died on the same day, the 12th, July 1987, the same numbers Elizabeth wrote on the paper. Just then, 
a train stops by his window, and he sees all his patients, that he is now confirmed to be dead. Later on, Peter goes to Duncan again, explains everything, and shows him the list of patients. Peter says that he would believe that he is hallucinating, but a lot of things don't add up. Duncan asks Peter what doesn't add up, and Peter replies that it's the fact that Duncan was the one who referred those patients to him. Surprisingly, when Peter looks in a mirror in front of him, he immediately realizes that Duncan is actually not there. It has been in his head this whole time. Peter continues his research, and tries to find the connection between all his patients. He matches their location, and finds that they all have one place in common, False Creek, the rail control station of the place where he grew up. The following day, Peter hops on a train and goes to his hometown, where his father leaves. When Peter gets to his father's house, he rings the doorbell, and his dad, William, lets him in. At this point, his dad knows that something is not right, so he asks Peter what is really going on because he shows up unannounced and without his wife. Peter jokes how he thinks William is the shrink, and his dad reminds him that he's a cop, so Peter reminds his dad that he's retired. Moments later, Peter goes to his old room, and opens the door to the closet, bringing a small box out. Inside, he finds an old newspaper and stares at it for a while. Afterwards, he leaves the house, and arrives at a bar, where he walks up to a man named Barry. Turns out Barry is a childhood friend of his. They catch up for old time's sake, and Barry learns that Peter lost his daughter and starts to feel sorry for him. Peter tells Barry that the death of Evie made him think of his past, and that he wants to talk to him about what happened in 1987, but Barry says that they promised that they would never talk about what happened. Peter tells Barry that people died when they were just kids, and then Barry asks him why he's bringing it up after so long. He assumes that Peter wants to get the police involved, so Peter tries to explain to Barry that he has been seeing ghosts, but it pisses Barry off the most. He barks at him to stay away, and leaves the bar. Meanwhile, Peter's dad walks into his room, and sees the newspaper that Peter left on his bed. Afterwards, we see Peter walking on the rail track, when he starts to see his teenage years play out right in front of him. He sees two 14-year-old boys, which turns out to be Peter and Barry. They are riding bicycles along the rail track, and finally stop and dump their bikes on the rail track. According to Barry, his elder brother told him that it's a make-out spot, so they hide behind a rock and watch people make out. They then hear what sounds like a woman's moan or scream. All of a sudden, they hear the horn of a train from afar, and instantly remember that they left their bikes on the rail track. Peter tries to run to the bikes but the train is too fast. As a result, the train derails and crashes, and all the passengers are dead. Young Peter goes closer to the train wreck, and recognizes some of the passengers as the patients he had spoken to, including Felix and Erica. He can also see Elizabeth Valentine inside the train, and the flashback ends. Moments later, Peter makes his way to leave, but stops when he sees Elizabeth Valentine. Suddenly, Felix approaches him from behind with a bloody face, and Felix towers him until the blood from his face falls on Peter's face. With that, Peter comes back to reality. The next day, we see Barry at the railway station. Meanwhile, Peter finally decides to go to the police station to confess. But he lies, he tells the female cop named Barbara that he was the only one involved. Barbara then asks Peter if he ever mentioned it to his dad who was a sergeant at the time, and Peter says no. Visibly upset, the cop excuses herself for a moment, and gulps some water while holding back tears. Here Peter learns the hard way that Erica, one of the patients he attended to, also turned out to be a victim of the train wreck. To add, Barbara is Erica's daughter. Feeling guilty, Peter apologizes, and the cop tells Peter that she appreciates his honesty, and she says that she'll file an official report. The cop tells Peter that Peter's father invited her over right after the train accident, and was kind to her, and that was why she decided to be a cop. When Peter gets home, he hears a sound from his room, so he goes to check it out. But then, he starts to hear Elizabeth humming. When he enters his closet, the door slams shut behind him, right when he starts to hear long throat croaks. All of a sudden, Elizabeth jumps on him out of nowhere and screams in his face. Moments later, Peter wakes up to Duncan pointing a flashlight in his face. Peter tells Duncan that he has told the truth and put it to rest, to which Duncan asks why they are still there. Duncan adds that it's impossible for two small bikes to derail a train, suggesting that Peter's mind is trying to change the truth because it's unacceptable. 
Duncan also says that Peter doesn't even remember the way his daughter died. Peter then has a flashback of the day Evie died, and remembers what caught his attention. It was a toy train station in a shop. With that, he wakes up. Meanwhile, Barbara is going through the case files from the train wreck 1987. In one of the pictures, she sees William doing his job, and strangely, young Peter is at the train wreck scene too. Later that day, Peter visits the rail track again, and is trying very hard to remember what exactly happened that night. He remembers running in the woods, and also remembers seeing a hand pull the controls in the signal box. Immediately after that memory hits him, he approaches the signal box by the rail track. He goes upstairs, and stands in front of the door when the door opens, only for Peter to see Barry's lifeless body hanging from the ceiling. When the cops arrive at the scene, Peter has no choice, but to confess to Barbara that Barry also left his bike on the rail track. In the meantime, one of the police officers in the signal box finds a badge on the floor. When Peter gets home, he takes a closer look at the newspaper and finds out that Elizabeth Valentine was missing before the accident. He then remembers seeing Elizabeth running in the woods. At the police station, the police officer who found the badge gives it to Barbara, right before Peter shows up at the office. He tells her that he thinks Elizabeth wasn't on the train, because he remembers seeing her running from a car just before the accident. Barbara asks Peter how he knows what Elizabeth looks like, so he explains that he sees the ghosts of the victims from the accident, and asks her to help him. Seeing that Barbara doesn't believe him, Peter tries to describe her mom, Erica. He says that she has a British accent and that she calls her Benny. This confuses the cop, and she asks Peter to go home because he's not helping. When he gets into the car, he finds Elizabeth's doll on the passenger seat. And instead of driving home, he drives into the woods where he remembers seeing her. He stops the car in the middle of the woods, and begs Elizabeth to show him what happened that night. Suddenly, an invincible hand hits the car's window, and when Peter looks ahead, he sees Elizabeth. She gestures to him to come along, and he does as she says. Back at the police station, Barbara takes out the badge that the police officer gave her earlier. She sees that the badge has the same name as the school Elizabeth attended. And so, she rushes to find Elizabeth's case file, and sees that the case was closed. At the same time, Peter follows Elizabeth, until he can see the railway signal box from afar. By this time, Barbara drives to William's house, and asks him if he can talk and he invites her in. Barbara tells William that she pulled out his old report from the train crash. William tells Barbara that she is taking it too personally because she lost her mom, but she says she doesn't think it happened the way Peter explained it that two bikes were mistakenly left on a train track. In the case file statement, William states that he received a call at the police station, and he proceeded to drive to the accident. He says he took the only available road, which is Oakstone, but Barbara points out that it would be impossible to drive through that road because the road was completely blocked by the wreckage. She says that the only way he could have driven across the tracks if he was at the scene before the accident. She then shows him the badge they found in the signal box, and says that she's sure it belongs to Elizabeth Valentine, missing school girl. William was in charge of Elizabeth's case, but he closed the case after he found her body in the wreckage. However, out of all the bodies found, hers was the only inconclusive cause of death, and Barbara thinks Peter saw something that night. Meanwhile, at the signal box, Peter finally remembers exactly how things played out that night, he saw a girl running from a car. When young Peter hears the scream from the signal box, he goes to check it out. Peter sees Elizabeth being choked and raped from behind by his father, and it also turns out that Elizabeth pulls a pedal that causes the train to immediately derail. After the train derails, William murders Elizabeth, and puts her body in the train wreckage. Young Peter saw it all happen. At William's house, Barbara says she'll wait for Peter, and William asks her if she wants a cup of tea, but she says no. Barbara feels like William is about to play a fast one, so she reaches for her gun just in case, and then he hits her on the head. William drives her car inside his garage, and throws her in the trunk. Not long after, Peter arrives just in time to see his dad at the garage, and reveals to William that he remembers everything. Peter asks his dad what he has done, and then William pulls a gun at Peter. He orders Peter to get in the garage, and Peter does just that. The son asks William how he feels about letting him live with the guilt all these years, and how many other girls he killed. When William is distracted for a second, Peter uses the opportunity to fight him off. But unfortunately, 
William gets hold of a tool on the floor and hits Peter with it, causing the son to fall unconscious. Before dawn the following morning, William drives across town with Barbara in the trunk, and Peter in the back seat. Suddenly, William sees Elizabeth in the middle of the road and loses control of the steering. He drives off the road and Peter falls out of the car, still unconscious in the process. The car ends up on the rail track, and William tries to start the car but it doesn't come on. Suddenly, all the doors of the car lock on their own, and William struggled to get it open but it doesn't work. He is terrified when he sees a monstrous looking Elizabeth in the mirror, and he hears the horn of a train from afar. Peter wakes up in time, and sees the train approaching, so he immediately picks up the father's gun, and starts to shoot to break the windows open. He succeeds in shooting the car trunk open and Barbara gets out of the car. However, when William tries to get out, Elizabeth appears and pulls him back in. Peter can see all the victims of the accident again, and they slowly disappear. When he's about to leave, he sees Elizabeth Valentine one last time, and this time, she looks pretty peaceful as she walks away. Days later, we see Peter sitting at the beach with Evie, who gives him a peck on the forehead, before she walks into the ocean, finally moving on and at peace. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Backtrack 2015. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.